a big hello to everybody from Boston, Massachusetts in America. And uh, it's a glorious, glorious day here, as you can see in my backyard. And today I'm going to talk to you about the single most precious thing to us, to all of us, to all humans. And it is after, of course, it's our life. That's the first most important thing. But the next most important thing is freedom and liberty. And so when in 1776, when Thomas Jefferson presented the Declaration of Independence to uh, the world, this is what he wrote. He said, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. So those are the most important things. But to me, what is the first image that conjures up in my mind when I think of freedom and liberty? It is obviously the Statue of Liberty on Ellis Island. And um, she's the one who is entitled the Lady Liberty Enlightening the World. Now she is an icon, she's a national treasure. She is the most loved and most recognized figure in the whole world. And of course, to me, she is a goddess. She is a symbol of all our cherished ideals. She is a symbol of, of course, freedom and liberty, but she's also a symbol of freedom, uh, of uh, friendship, friendship between France and America. She is a symbol of opportunity. She is a symbol of immigration. And of course, she is a symbol of hope, inspiration, and transformation. So her story begins with the French professor Laboule, Laboule. In 1865, he invited a whole bunch of French dignitaries and important French people to his house near Versailles uh, for dinner. And as part of this group, he invited a very young, promising sculptor whose name was August Bartholdi. And August was very shy and very young. And so he kept quiet through the whole dinner. But, um, but what was brought, the subject that was brought up here was the creation, the whole idea of creation of a monument to the centennial of the Declaration of Independence in America. That was in 1876, but also a monument to the friendship of America and France. And, um, and they said that, oh, the, the people who build it should be French and the American together. They should both build it together. And Bartholdi just kept quiet the whole time, but in his mind, the vision of Lady Liberty enlightening the world kept coming. And so he went to America a few years later, he came here to find the perfect place to put up this statue. And he kept sketching everything through his journey and he didn't like anything he sketched, so he would rip it all up and he would throw it in the ocean. And then finally, it wasn't until he entered the New York Harbor and he saw the Hudson River pouring into the Atlantic Ocean. And in the middle, he saw this little island, which is now known as Ellis Island. And he could then completely envision this beautiful statue standing there with a torch in her hand and uh, enlightening the world. But he kept quiet about it. So then when he sketched this, he used his mother's face as the inspiration. And um, then he met President Grant and important people in America. And they agreed, absolutely agreed immediately that this was a wonderful idea, that we should do it together, that the French will build the statue and that the Americans will build the pedestal. And so the, France, the French people started their donations right away. They started fundraising immediately in uh, France. And uh, they had um, theater and opera and entertainment and prize fights and uh, literary auctions. And, um, and the young and the old and the children, they all made donations. And in 1876, the arm with the torch arrived in America. And in 1878, 
the head went to the World Fair in Paris. And in 1884, the statue was done. Of course, in the World Fair, Mr. Eiffel, who was of, of the fame of Eiffel Tower, of course, he's the one who actually created the skeleton. He was an engineer, created the skeleton for the Statue of Liberty. And then the statue was completed in 1884. But now the fundraising in America was not going very well. So the statue was ready, so towering above Paris, looking down at the roofs, sitting there waiting for her pedestal, but the pedestal was not ready. And so there was a guy called Joseph Pulitzer. Remember the Pulitzer Prize winning uh, Pulitzer Prize? So this man, was the editor of the world newspaper, the largest circulation in America at the time. And he said, okay, I am going to put a full page ad here that anyone who makes a donation for the pedestal for the Statue of Liberty is going to have their name published in this paper. And the paper went all over America and the donations started to pour in. And then in 1883, uh, Emma Lazarus, she wrote this very famous stirring sonnet and it's called The New Colossus, and I'll read some lines to you because it's so important. She said, keep ancient lands, your storied pomp, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, the tempest torn to me, I lift my lamp beside the golden door. And so then, the amazing thing is that in 1886, she was installed and the symbolism of the statue is really quite amazing because she raises her right hand and in her right hand, she bears the torch that, the torch that enlightens the world. The crown symbolizes the rays of the sun. And the seven spikes of her uh, crown symbolize the seven seas and the seven continents. And then the tablet in her left hand has the date of the Declaration of the Independence of America. And then the broken shackles and the chains of, at her feet are the ones that symbolize the end of slavery. But you know, freedom is never, never free. And what I really want to tell you today is this that the biggest shackles are the ones that we put upon ourselves, that we prevent our soul from expressing its ideas, expressing its thoughts, expressing its deepest aspirations, expressing its choices, expressing its dreams and hopes. And that is what creates us from giving our greatest discoveries, our innovations, and our creativity that we are capable of to the whole world. And we become slaves to our own ego selves, to our materialism, to our greed, to our um, vices, to our addictions. And this is what becoming a slave to ourselves and this is what we need to free ourselves from. You know, in the 13th century, this is what Rumi asked a question. He said, why do you stay in prison when the doors are so wide open? So free yourselves, free yourselves. The golden door is inside you.